the good stops evil. But this time we need another kind of evil, you see? <laughs> because this guy is half man, half amazing. And so he went to the Underverse, and so he comes back with a religion, all right? He comes back from the Underverse with a religion. And the religion is life is antagonistic to the natural state, all right? So your verse, life is a mistake, and it's just everywhere. And we might need to get rid of that. But then again, when we stab you in the neck, you're going to be kind of alive, half dead, quarter Filipino, and a fifth Native American. <laughs> you get it? And that's the religion. Yeah. Because we're going to take your soul or kill you, which ends up with us taking your soul. Right? Yeah. They just take their soul anyway. <laughs> Oh, okay, and then when we're unclear, we're going to go to the quarter deads. Yeah, there's half are, deads. Well, they're half dead, a fifth Scottish, <laughs> and maybe one third Singaporean. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's the religion. Does it make sense to you? <laughs> yeah, what is it, to wipe what, what out everybody on Earth to send more people to the Underverse where life is better? But Universe. What, not not just Earth, the universe, bro. But when you come back from the underverse, you're kind of crazy. I mean, but your fashion sense is lit, bro. Okay? That helmet you with the faces, son. You you know you know that you know that at the first that first shot where where the helmet mask turns and its eyes blink, you know that the dude basically wrote the movie around that. Oh, yeah. That was the first idea he had, and then he wrote a movie around it. He thought that that was the greatest thing. This, Absolutely. This movie, yeah. Uh, so I think uh, that image, and then at the end with him on the front throne looking depressed. Those are the two images exactly. they started with. And then that exactly. was it. That was it. <laughs> or no, him spinning we're, we're, on the cables. Yes. In the prison I, plan. I wrote. Okay, so my note for that was, my note for that was, did Riddick take stripper pole lesson? Because that rope thing was unreal. He wrapped himself in that rope and went up, and I want to believe that that was Vin Diesel that did that. I want Tui, to believe it. Tui said, uh, Tui, Tui said that um, it was a lot of Vin. So he said there were stunt doubles, but he said that shot, you could see a couple shots with Vin doing that. Because, dude, yes. dude, he's a brick in this movie. He's... 100%. I think people forget, I mean, you know, Din's Din? Vin? Vin Diesel <laughs> equals Din. Man, my words tonight, man. This is such a fresh of... Bre wait, breath of fresh air for me, because... It just reminded me once again of Vin and his charisma. I mean, you look at Fast, you look at you know, even his small role in Saving Private Ryan. Dude had it. The one thing, yeah. though, that I don't like about Riddick and Vin is when he gets onto the uh, Merck's spaceship and he goes, three things. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> you made three mistakes. Oh, tombs. <laughs> when he says it to tombs, it's like, and then he makes him listen to all three things. You took the job. You only bought yeah. four people. Empty gun yeah. rack. But Norbert, yeah. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, man, if I met you and I somehow annoyed you the first time that we met, you're like, five things. And then you say <laughs> all five things. I would just walk. I would walk out of that room. I'm like, see you later. Nice meeting you, man. I'm out of here. <laughs> what, whatever, jerk. Yeah, if you you're know, the you... guy that says three things and then says all three <laughs> things, that's such a movie trope. I have never, Norbert, in your life, has somebody <laughs> ever three thinged you? <laughs> you know who does that to you? Your parents, okay? And this is in the 80s when the parents would still beat the shit out of you when you've done things wrong. Call it spanking. I'm yeah. putting up air quotes because it's a podcast, and so you can't see it. But, yeah, absolutely. First of all, didn't I tell you? Second of all, and then by the time the third thing, I don't <laughs> The third thing comes with pain. Oh, you man. Did they, did, did they say before they said it, though, three things? Or did they just jump in with one? Okay, so they're coming at you, and as they're you, they're they're preparing the implement of 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 pain delivery, and you know they it's you know kneading the belt, or perhaps the cord, the extension cord, or maybe the wire hanger, and then there are three reasons why I'm going to beat you now. Oh, Your okay. parent. That's fair. very disturbing. Very disturbing. It makes sense for parents. But mm, yeah. aside from parents, has anybody well, ever no, three no, things no. you? 
No, no, not at all, not at all. And you, being, you know, ex-Patrick Swayze Roadhouse bouncer guy, <laughs> you would definitely have had the opportunity to be three-thinged more than I would have, you know? Yeah, Dude, no, no one's ever three-thinged me. Three reasons why I need to get in this bar, bro. First, drip. <laughs> Second, swag. Third, iconic personality, bro. If they said that, I would have let him in. No, then you rip his throat out, bro. You <laughs> haven't been watching the movies. But it's, yeah, just someone who three things you and then tells you the three things. It's just, <sighs> I don't know. I love it, but that's and, such a, but Vin Diesel does that a lot. Remember that, remember his speech in Knock Around, guys, Norbert? 500. 500 <laughs> what? 500 fights is what I've been in. You know, you're getting off the first couple and you remember them, but then. Once you're getting up in the 250 range, it gets blurry, but then you get to 500 and you're just brick and mortar. You know, you're brick. You're a brick shit house. You're just a piece of slab rock meat. Nothing hurts. I've been in 500 fights. Let me tell you about the first one. Let me tell you about the second <laughs> one. Let me tell you about the... He's always speechifying people in his early movies. He's always dropping listen, them. Listen, listen. He's doing this to show you he's got range. And also... A lot like H. John Benjamin, you know, a lot of it is the voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not to say that H. John Benjamin is not talented, but H. John Benjamin has basically been doing Archer since he was doing the coach Phrasing. on home movies. You know, yeah. <laughs> he's been doing he's been doing that for thirty years, I feel like, you know. Wow. And so you got you've got your thing, and your thing is your voice. It's very sonorous, it's really resonant. And you do want to hear him just threaten people sometimes and just and just elucidate about just, things. If you've been in 500 fights, Norbert, you're not telling somebody about that. You're just cracking them. <laughs> oh, no. You don't well, got time for that anymore. Well, also, if you've been in 500 fights, your brain is probably like tofu at this point. It's hanging out. So your you're ear. not making sense anyway. Yeah, absolutely. You could brush absolutely. your brain. Right absolutely. Now. You know, just... when, you turn, when you turn lights on. In your house, you know, you see on the wall, you have CR, uh, what is it, the the brain disease. Oh, uh, I know, uh, CRT? I have, is it, right? Yeah, uh, I think it is. Yeah, CRT. Yes. TRC. Not, but, not TLC. I, I'm drinking LOL. scotch. You got a baby. We None of us are thinking right. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we don't have CRT, so that's good. No, but I want some chicken. So you <laughs> said that there were three movies here. I, I counted I counted I counted five movies. Okay, <laughs> starts off as prestige Star Wars, right? Because we get James Duty James Duty Dench. We get Dame Judy Dench <laughs> giving us just the most beautiful Shakespearean explanation of why three headed atomic space dildos that wipe out planets. Why do they wipe out the planets? Right? You know. And then we find out that good usually defeats evil, but there's another kind of evil that defeats evil, and that's the kind of evil we need, because now evil is is Riddick. Riddick's evil now, right? He's not evil though. I know he's not, but 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 we need another kind of evil, bro. Yeah. And so that's why we. And then the second movie we get, Tombs the Bounty Hunter. All right, we 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 find out how to not be a good bounty hunter. Be with tombs. the four man crew that was in tombs, right? That's our second movie. And then, you know, we get some crematoria shot. We get to see Jack. Jack is hot now. <laughs> Jack is hot now. Right? And and Jack Jack will kick you in the face because she's got a knife in her in her shoe, apparently. Like Wolverine. She and does some good spin kicks sex. in this. Dude, she's a beast. Yeah. You get sexy dreams position about being the chosen one and and glowy hands, right? That's our second movie, the end of our second movie. And then our third movie, we get Edgelord Star Wars, right? Yeah. We get dudes in extreme costumes. And we finally get mwah, some Keith David. Yes. Keith David, he comes back. These stories, they are bedtime stories. I can't do Keith David doing a Muslim accent. I could do <laughs> Keith David, but not Keith David doing a Muslim accent. All right? he, he moved they, quick when he got back, too. Oh, he's... Look. His accent is way better in this one than it was in the first. And I love that they brought him back. Because as you and I know, you and I are stands. Yeah, we are. We're KD stands. And so I know you have a daughter, like you just mentioned. And so apparently he tells his daughter bedtime stories 
about how his three mentees were murdered on a desert planet by creatures who live at night and are burned when ultraviolet light contacts their skin. Is yeah. that a story that you're going to tell your daughter? I'm already like, telling – She's yeah. only she's only six months old, and I tell her about Deep Blue Sea. <laughs> and about the time that you put that guy's face through a wall yep. at the bar. What? <laughs> and is we, this what we're doing? We've been reading Harry Potter to her at night, so yeah, we're we're loading her up. Yeah, you're reading Harry Potter, some Donald Goins, a little bit of Arthur Miller. You're just giving her the truth. Chuck yeah. Palahniuk, you know, Palahniuk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey, hey, little daughter, today we're going to read Fight Club. Yeah. I you, am Jack Boiling Rage. Have you read Choke? <laughs> <laughs> these are these are bedtime stories. No, they're not, Keith David. <laughs> no, they're not. All right? All right? And we get the opposite of this in Aliens when Newt is talking to Ripley. Is that where real babies come from? Why do they tell children that monsters aren't real? Like, that's the result of telling your daughter horrible things. Yeah. Okay. You traumatize them. It's not a cool. And then Rashid was walking down this alley, and the monster grabbed him and tore him into pieces. We heard him scream, "Good night, my daughter." What? <laughs> <laughs> Does he tell her about the time he fought the guy with the glasses? Oh. <laughs> or his time in the Arctic with uh, a bearded man? And one day, your father was in the Arctic, <laughs> and there were many men people he was the only black man there which is the real nightmare of our story good night my daughter <laughs> <laughs> Game over. Game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's our third movie edgelord star wars when the necromongers invade helium prime right or new mecca i don't know it's just there's a lot of names no, helium prime the attack helium prime yeah right edgelord star wars the necromongers attack the their army Real fast, murders them all. We get James James Ju <laughs> James Judy Dench comes James, back. James James Ju what James Judy Dench. <laughs> <laughs> but she, dude, she comes back and gives the classy exposition about the Necromongers and they advance planet to planet, murdering us all. And you, Riddick, are the only hope. And that's why I put a bounty on your head because me and Tombs, we are friends, you see, and sometimes bond. You must find the microfiche. <laughs> and she's just, she's just M. She's M. She's like, okay? I will meet she's... my end in Scotland. Exactly. She I mean, she spends the whole movie being M. Do okay? you want to know in my notes, Norbert? I wrote James Duty Gench. Because that's what I said <laughs> to Megan when I was talking to her about it. So I made sure to add it. I'm looking at James Duty Dench. <laughs> I also have Hot Planet. All right, what are the other movies? All right, yeah. So the third movie is Edgelord Star Wars, right? The fourth movie, Prison Break. <laughs> But 90s extreme, right? You know, welcome to crematoria, guy. I'm going to kill you with my teacup. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> Was that your soup cup? It, what does he call it first? I wrote that down in my notes. Hey, that's right. What is it, a soup cup? No. I said I would kill you with my teacup. <laughs> I, I, dude, I'm not going to lie. That was dope. What How do you think said? the protein How? waffles are in Butcher Bay? Okay. Butcher Bay the game I've been playing on my PC. So far, I haven't had any food, but I did stab a guy with a shank that I made in the bathroom. Oh. So I haven't had food. But if the protein waffles were something you could eat and butcher bait, I would assume they would taste like people because there is nothing on that planet that you could turn into food except for the dead inmate. Did I tell you how that I bought that movie? Go for it. Break it uh, down. I was a bouncer, and I started making extra money. And I was always really careful with money. I never went into debt. Like my credit score is 840. So I never Ooh. I never bought anything unless I knew I had money to back it up. So I started becoming a bouncer and I got an influx of cash. So I got a, an Xbox, but Halo was my first game, of course. But my second yeah, game was Butcher Bay. And that game it came, the bomb. It came sweet, bro. The yeah. Bomb. Full stop. Dude, it was awesome. Like there's, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that game. Nothing is wrong with Escape from Butcher Bay. The voices are dope. John's is in it, you know, like real actors are in this man. Michael Rooker. It's good. It's a good game. <laughs> it's so good. But, and, oh, man. oh, so wait. So what, what movie are we on? We're on the fourth movie. Uh, we're on the fourth movie. The fourth movie is Prison Break. We get teacup murder. We get welcome to crematoria guy. Right. We get. Is there a name for this private little world of yours? I'm going to start saying that to people <laughs> because I love that line. 
Is there a name for this private little world of yours? And Kira, Alexa Davalo, says she based her off of the lady from Evanescence. 